how many alien civilizations are out there? When you oh. when you looked up at the stars with your mom, and you were counting them, what's your mom think about the uh, number of alien civilizations? I actually don't know. I would imagine she would take the viewpoint of you know she's pretty humble and she knows how many she knows there's a huge number of potential spawn sites out there, so she would. Spawn sites? Spawn sites, yeah. yeah. You know, this is our spawn, spawn sites. Spawn sites. You have spawn sites in Polytopia. We spawned on Earth, you know. it's. Hmm, yeah, spawn sites. Why does that feel weird to say spawn? Because it makes me feel like it's, um, there's only one source of life and it's spawning in different locations. That's why the word spawn. Because like, it feels like life that originated on Earth really originated here right it is it is an, a unique to yeah. this particular yeah i mean but i don't in my mind it doesn't exclude you know that completely different forms of life and different biochemical soups can't also spawn but i guess it implies that there's some spark that is yeah uniform, which i, I kind of like the idea of it. it's yeah. you know and then I, I get to think about respawning like after it dies, like what happens if life on Earth ends? Is it is it going to restart again? Probably not. It de it depends. Yeah, maybe Earth is. It depends too. on the type of you know what what's the thing that kills it kills it off, right? If it's a paper clip maximizer, not that, you know for the for the example, but you know some kind of very self replicating, you know, high on the capabilities, very low on the wisdom type thing. Yeah. So whether that's you know gray goo, green goo. You know, like nanobots or just a shitty misaligned AI that thinks it needs to turn everything into paper clips. Um, you know, if it's something like that, then it's going to be very hard for life. You know, complex life because, by definition, you know, a paper clip maximizer is the ultimate instantiation of Moloch. Deeply low complexity, over optimization on a single thing, sacrificing everything else, turning the whole world into. Although something tells me, like, if we actually take a paperclip maximizer, it destroys everything. It's a really dumb system that just en envelops the whole of Earth and the universe beyond. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that part, but okay, great. That's so the thought it, experiment. It, it anyway. becomes a multi-planetary paperclip maximizer. Well, it just, it just propagates. I mean, it, it depends whether it figures out how to jump the vacuum gap. Um. But it, again, I mean, this is all silly because it's it's a hypothetical thought experiment, which I think doesn't actually have much practical application to the AI safety problem, but it's just a fun thing to play around with. But yeah. if by definition it is maximally intelligent, which means it is maximally good at navigating the environment around it in order to achieve its goal, but extremely bad at choosing goals in the first place. So again, we're talking on this orthogonality thing, right? It's very low on wisdom, but very high on capability. Um, then it will figure out how to jump the vacuum gap between planets and stars and so on, and thus just turn every atom it gets its hands on into paperclips. Yeah, uh, by the way, for, for people who Which is maximum virality, by the way. It's, that's what virality is. But does not mean that virality is necessarily all about maximizing paperclips. In that case, it is. So for people who don't know, this is just a, a thought experiment an example of an AI system that's very that has a goal and is willing to do anything to accomplish that goal, including destroying all life on earth and all human life and all of consciousness in the universe in or for the goal of producing a maximum number of paper clips. Okay. Uh, or, or whatever its optimization function was that it was set at. But don't you think- It could be making, re recreating Lexes. Maybe it'll tile the universe in Lex. Uh, go on. I so, like this idea. No, I'm just kidding. Right. That's, that's better. <laughs> yeah. That's that's more interesting than paperclips. That could be infinitely optimal if but I were to if say you ask so me, myself. It's, it's still a bad thing because it's permanently capping yeah. what the universe could ever be. It's like that's that's its end state. Or achieving the optimal that the universe could ever achieve. But that's up to – different people have different perspectives on this. Uh, but don't you think within the paperclip world that would emerge – just like in the zeros and ones that make up a computer that would emerge beautiful complexities. Like it, it, it won't suppress, you know, as you scale to multiple planets and throughout, there'll, there'll emerge these little worlds that uh, on top of the fabric of maximizing paperclips, there will be, uh, that, that would emerge like little societies of, of, uh, Paper clip. Well, then we're not. Well, then we're not describing a paperclip maximizer anymore because, by the de like, if you think of what a paperclip is, it is literally just a piece of bent iron. Yes. Right. So if it's 
maximizing that throughout the universe. It's taking every atom it gets its hand on into, somehow turning it into iron or steel, and then bending it into that shape and then done and done. By definition, like paper clips, there is no there is no way for well, okay. So you're saying that paper clips somehow will just emerge and create well, through gravity or something. No, well, no, no, no. Because because there's there's a dynamic element of the whole system. It's not just it's creating those paper clips and the act of creating. There's going to be a process, and that process will have a dance to it because it's not like sequential thing. There's a whole complex three dimensional <laughs> system of paper clips. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, people have, like string theory, right? It's, it's supposed to be strings that are interacting in fascinating ways. I'm sure paper clips are, are very string like. They can be interacting in very interesting ways as you scale exponentially through three dimensional. I mean, I'm sure the paper clip maximizer has to come up with a theory of everything. It has to create like wormholes, right? It has to break, uh, like, it has to understand quantum mechanics. I, I love your, I love your optimism. Relativity. This is where I'd say this. We're going into the realm of pathological optimism, where it bites. <laughs> um, I'm sure there will be a. <laughs> I I think there is an intelligence that emerges from that system. So you're you're saying that basically intelligence is inherent in the fabric of reality and will find a way. Kind of like yeah. Goldblum says, life will find a way. You think life will find a way, even out of this perfectly homogenous dead soup. It's not perfectly homogenous. It has to, it's perfectly maximal in the production. I don't know why people keep thinking it's homogenous. It maximizes the number of paper clips. That's the only thing. It's not trying to be homogenous. It's trying it's to, true. It's true, trying true, true, to true, maximize true. paper clips. So you're saying, you're saying that because it, because, you know, kind of like in the Big Bang, or, you know, it seems like, you know, things, there were clusters, there was more stuff here than there. That was enough yeah. of the patternicity it's, that kickstarted the evolutionary the, process. It's the little weirdnesses that, that will make even it beautiful. Out of, yeah. So, Complexity yeah, you, emerges. Interesting. Okay. Well, so how does that line up then with the the whole heat death of the universe, right? Because that's that's another sort of instantiation of this. It's like everything becomes so far apart and so cold and so perfectly mixed that it's like homogenous grayness. Mm-hmm. Do you think that even out of that homogenous grayness where there's no you know, negative energy, uh, entropy that, you know, there's no uh, free energy that we understand, even from that new stuff. Yeah, the, the paperclip mo- maximizer or any other intelligence systems will figure out ways to travel to other universes to create big bangs within those universes or through black holes to create whole other worlds <sighs> to f- break the, what we consider the limitations of <laughs> physics. <laughs> the, the paperclip maximizer will find a way if a way exists and we're, we should be humble to realize that we because, don't really... yeah be, but because it just wants to make more paperclips yeah. so it's going to go into those universes and turn them into paperclips yeah but we, oh. we humans not humans but com- complex system exists on top of that we're not interfering with it, it the, the, this complexity emerges from this the, simple base state the simple base whether, state whether it's yeah whether it's you know, plank lengths or paper clips as the base yeah. unit. Yeah, I you, you can think of like the universe as a paper clip maximizer because it's doing some dumb stuff. Like physics seems to be pretty dumb. It has a, like I don't know if you can su- summarize yes. it. In- yeah, the, yeah, the, the 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 laws are fairly basic, and yet out of them, amazing complexity emerges. And its goals seem to be pretty basic and dumb. If you can summarize its goals, I mean, I don't I don't know what's a nice way. Maybe. Um, maybe laws of thermodynamics could be good. I don't know if you can assign goals to physics, but if you formulate in the sign in a in the sense of goals, it's very similar to paperclip maximizing in, in the dumbness of the goals. But the the pockets of complexity as as emerge is where beauty emerges. That's where life emerges. That's where intelligence, that's where humans emerge. And I, I, I think we're being very down on this whole paperclip maximizer thing. Now, the you're, reason you're, we hate it- I think, yeah, because what you're saying is that you think that the force of emergence itself yeah. Yeah. is another like unwritten, well, not, not unwritten, but like another baked in law of the of, of reality. Yeah. And, and you, you're trusting that emergence will find a way to, even out of seemingly the most mollicky, Awful, out, you know, plain outcome. Emergence will still find a way. I love, I love that as a philosophy. I think yeah. it's really nice. I would wield it carefully because there's large error bars on on that and the, and the certainty of that. Yeah. Um, and how about we build the paperclip maximizer and find out? <laughs>
Classic. Yeah. Moloch is doing <laughs> cartwheels. Man. Yeah. Yeah. But that, the I thing digress. is, yeah. it will destroy humans in the process, which is the thing, which is the reason we really don't like it. We we seem to be really holding on to this whole human civilization thing. It, would you would that make you sad if AI systems that are beautiful, that are conscious, that are interesting and complex and intelligent ultimately lead to the death of humans? Would that make you sad? If humans led to the death of humans? Sorry. Like if they would supersede humans. Oh, they, if, if some AI? Yeah, AI would uh, <laughs> would end humans. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's the reason why I'm like, in some ways, I'm less emotionally concerned about AI risk as than say, bio, you know, bio risk. Because at least with AI, there's a chance, you know, if, if we're in this hypothetical where it wipes out humans, but it does it for some like higher purpose it needs our atoms to and energy to do something at least now there's the universe is going on to do something interesting um whereas if it wipes everything you know bio like just kills everything on earth and that's it and there's no more you know earth cannot spawn anything more meaningful in the in the few hundred million years it has left left because it doesn't have much time left um then uh yeah i i don't know that, that so one of my favorite books i've ever read is uh nova scene by James Lovelock, who sadly just died. Um, he wrote it when he was like 99. He died aged 102, so it's a fairly new book. Um, and he sort of talks about that, that he thinks it's, you know, sort of building off this Gaia theory where like Earth is a like living, some form of intelligence itself. And that this is the next like step, right? Is this, this whatever this new intelligence that is maybe silicon based as opposed to carbon based goes on to do um and it's a really sort of in some ways an optimistic but weirdly fatalistic book um and i don't know if i fully subscribe to it but it's a beautiful piece to read anyway so am i sad by that idea i think so yes and, and actually yeah this is the reason why i'm sad by the idea because if something is truly brilliant and wise and smart and truly super intelligent it should be able to figure out abundance so if it figures out abundance, it shouldn't need to kill us off. It should be able to find a way for us. It should be, there's plenty, the universe is huge. There should be plenty of space for it to go out and do all the things it wants to do and like give us a little pocket where we can continue doing our things and we can continue to do things and so on. Um, and again, if it's so supremely wise, it shouldn't even be worried about the game theoretic considerations that by leaving us alive, we'll then go and create another like super intelligent agent that it then has to compete against mm -hmm. because it should be omni wise and smart enough to not have to concern itself with that. Unless, unless it deems humans to be kind of assholes. Like, uh, like the humans are a source of non, of a lose-lose kind of dynamics. Well, yes and no. We're not, I, Moloch is. That's why it's, I think it's important to say. But maybe humans ourselves. are the source of Moloch. No, I, th I mean, I think game theory is the source of Moloch. And, I, you know, because Moloch exists in, in non-human systems as well. It happens within, like, agents within a game in terms of, like, you know, uh, it, it applies to agents, but, it, like, it can apply to, you know, uh, a species that's on an island of animals, you know, rats outcompeting the ones that, like, massively consume all the resources are the ones that are going to win out over the more, like, chill socialized ones and so you know creates this malthusian trap like moloch exists in little pockets in nature as well well so I it's wonder, not a strictly human thing. i wonder if it's actually a result of consequences of the invention of predator and prey dynamics maybe it needs to, ai will have to kill off every organism that so now you're talking about killing off competition not competition but just um uh, uh like the way uh, it's like uh like the weeds or whatever in in a beautiful flower garden. Parasites. The parasites, yeah, uh, on on the whole system. Now, yes. of course, it will it will it won't do that completely. It'll put them in a zoo like we do with parasites. It'll ring fence. Yeah, and there'll be somebody doing a PhD on like they'll prod humans with a stick and see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, in terms of letting us run wild outside of the uh, you know geographically constrained region, that might be. Uh, that it might uh, decide to <laughs> against that. No, I think there's obviously the capacity for beauty and kindness and non uh, non Moloch behavior amidst humans. So I'm pretty sure AI will preserve us. Uh, let me. Uh, you, I don't know if you answered the the aliens question. You, you oh, had, I didn't. You, you had a good conversation with Toby uh, Toby Ward. Yes. About um, various sides of the universe. I think did did he say 
now I'm forgetting, but I think he said it's a good chance we're alone. So the 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 classic, you know, Fermi paradox question is, um, there are so many spawn points, and yet, you know, it didn't take us that long to go from harnessing fire to sending out radio signals into space. So surely, given the vastness of space, we should be, and you know, even if only a tiny fraction of those create life and other civilizations too, we should be, the universe should be very noisy. There should be evidence of Dyson spheres or whatever, you know, like at least radio signals and so on. But seemingly things are very silent out there. Um, now, of course, it depends on who you speak to. Some people say that they're getting signals all the time and so on. And like, I don't want to make an epistemic statement on that, but um, it seems like there's a lot of silence. And so that raises this paradox. And then they, uh, the, the, you know, the Drake equation, mm -hmm. So the Drake equation is like uh, basically just a simple thing of like trying to estimate the number of possible uh, civilizations within the galaxy by multiplying the number of uh, stars created per year by the number of stars that have planets, planets that are habitable, blah, blah, blah. So all these like different factors. Um, and then you plug in numbers into that and you, you know, depending on like the range of, you know, uh, you, your lower bound and your upper bound point, point estimates that you put in, you get out a number at the end for the number of civilizations. But what, Toby and his crew did um, differently was Toby is, is a researcher at the Future of Humanity Institute. Uh, they, instead of, they, they realized that it's like basically a statistical quirk that if you put in point sources, even if you think you're putting in conservative point sources, because on some of these variables, the the uncertainty is so large, it spans like maybe even like a couple of hundred of orders of magnitude. Um by putting in point sources, it's always going to lead to um, overestimates. Um, and so they, on, like, by putting stuff on a log scale, I mean, actually they did it on like a log log scale on some of them, um, so, and then like ran the simulation across the whole um, bucket of uncertainty across all those orders of magnitude. When you do that, then actually the number comes out much, much smaller. And that's the more statistically rigorous, you know, mathematically correct way of doing the calculation. It's still a lot of hand-waving. As science goes, it's it's like definitely, you know, just waving, I don't know what an analogy is, but it's hand-wavy. Um, and uh, anyway, when they did this, and then they in, did a Bayesian update on it as well to like factor in the fact that there is no evidence that we're picking up because, you know, no evidence is actually a form of evidence, right? Um, and... The long and short of it comes out that the we're roughly around seventy percent to be the only uh, intelligent civilization in our galaxy thus far, and around fifty fifty in the entire observable universe. Which sounds so crazily counterintuitive, but their math is legit. Well, yeah, the the math around this particular equation, which is the equation is ridiculous on many levels, but uh, the, the 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 night the powerful thing about the equation is there's the different things different components that can be estimated and the error bars on which can be reduced with science. Mm -hmm. And and hence throughout, since the equation came out, the, the error bars have been coming out on different, yeah, that's different very true. aspects. And so that it almost kind of says, uh, what like this gives you a mission to reduce the error bars on these estimates uh, over a period of time. And once you do, you can, better and better understand. Like in the process of redoing the error bars, you'll get to understand actually what is the right way to find out where the aliens are, how many of them there are, and all those kinds of things. So I don't think it's good to use that for an estimation. I think you do have to think from like, more like from first principles, just looking at what life is on earth. Mm -hmm. Like, and trying to understand the very physics-based biologic, chemistry, biology-based question of what is life? Maybe computation-based. What the fuck is this thing? Right. And that, like how difficult is it to create this thing? Right. It's it's one way to say like how many planets like this are out there, all that kind of stuff. But it feels like from our very limited knowledge perspective, the right way is to think how, how does, what is this thing and how does it originate from from very simple non-life things, how does complex life-like things emerge? From 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 a rock to a bacteria, mm. protein, and these like weird systems that 
encode information and pass information from self-replicate and then also select each other and mutate in interesting ways such that they can adapt and evolve and build increasingly more complex systems. Right. Well, it's, it's a form of information processing, yeah. right? Right. So Whereas it's, information transfer, but then also an, an energy processing, which then results in, uh, I guess, information processing. Maybe I'm getting bogged well, down. So it's, well, it's doing some modification. And yeah, the input is some energy. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's able to extract, yeah, r- r- extract resources uh, from its environment in order to achieve a goal. But and the goal doesn't seem to be clear. Right. The, 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 the goal <laughs> is, well, the goal is to make more of itself. Yeah. But in a way that uh, increases, I mean, I don't know if evolution is a, a fundamental law of the universe, but it seems to want to m- replicate itself in a way that maximizes the chance of its survival. Individual agents within yeah. an ecosystem do, yes. Yes, evolution itself doesn't give a fuck. Right. right. It's a very, it don't care. It's just like... Oh, you optimize it. Well, at least it's it's certainly um yeah, it doesn't care about the 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 welfare of the individual agents within it. But it does seem to, I don't know. I, I think it's I think the mistake is that we're anthropomorphizing. It's to even try and you know, give evolution a mindset. Um, because it is uh, there's a really great post by Eliezer uh Yudkowsky on um uh Less Wrong, which is um a, an alien god. And he talks about like the mistake we make when we try and like put our mind, think through things from an evolutionary perspective as though we're like giving evolution like some kind of agency and what it wants. Um, yeah, worth reading. But uh, it, yeah. I, I would like to say that having interacted with a lot of really smart people that say that anthropomorphization is a mistake, I would like to say that saying that anthropomorphization is a mistake is a mistake. I think uh, there's a lot of power in anthropomorphization. Uh, if I can only say that word correctly one time, uh, I just I I think that's actually a really powerful way to reason through things. I I think people, especially people in robotics, seem to run away from it as fast as possible. And uh, I I just can I you think, give an example of like how it helps in robotics? Oh, in uh, that our world is a world of humans, and to see robots as fundamentally just tools runs away from the fact that the, we live in a world of a dynamic world of humans that like these all these game theory systems we've we've talked about that a robot that ever has to interact with humans and i don't mean like intimate friendship interaction i mean in a factory setting where it has to deal with the uncertainty of humans all that kind of stuff you have to acknowledge that the robot's behavior has an effect on the human Mm. just as much as the human has an effect on the robot. And there's a dance there. Mm. And you have to realize that this entity, when a human sees a robot, this is obvious in a physical manifestation of a robot, they feel a certain way. They have a fear, they have uncertainty, they, um, they, they have their own personal life projections. We have to have pets and dogs and the thing looks like a dog. They have their own memories of what a dog is like. They have certain feelings, and that's gonna be useful in a safety setting, safety critical setting, which is one of the most trivial settings for a robot in terms of how to avoid any kind of dangerous situations. And a robot should really consider that in um, navigating its environment. And we humans are right to reason about how a robot should consider navigating its environment through anthropomorphization. I also think our brains are designed to think in 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 um, human um, human terms. Like game theory, I, I think is um, is is best applied in the space of human decisions. And so, uh, right, you're dealing. I mean, with things like AI, AIs, they are. You know, we can somewhat like. I don't think it's. The reason I, I say anthropomorphization we need to be careful with is because there is a danger of overly applying, overly wrongly assuming that that this artificial intelligence is going to operate in any similar way to us, yeah. because it is operating on a fundamentally different substrate. Like even dogs or even mice or whatever, in some ways, like anthropomorphizing them is less of a mistake, I think, than an AI, even though it's an AI we built and so on, because at least we know that they're running from the same substrate. 
and they have and they've also evolved from the same out of the same evolutionary process you know they've followed this evolution of like needing to compete for resources and needing to find a mate and that kind of stuff whereas an ai that has just popped into an existence somewhere on a like a cloud server let's say you know or whatever however it runs and whatever it, whether it, i don't know whether they have an internal experience i don't think they necessarily do I, in fact i don't think they do but the point is is that to try and m- apply any kind of modeling of like see, thinking through problems and decisions in the same way that we do has to be done extremely carefully because they are like it, it, they're so alien their method of whatever their form of thinking is is just so different because they've never had to evolve you know in the same way yeah i was beautifully put i was just playing devil's advocate i do think in certain contexts anthropomorphization is not going to hurt you yes engineers run away from it too fast but i, yes, I can, I can but, see that but yeah, mo- for, for the most <laughs> point you're right 